Hello and welcome back to the fourth episode now of Quarantine Questions. My name is Lachlan McCurdy and we're here for Sporting News as we chat to Australia's Olympians as they return home from Tokyo. Today I am delighted to be joined by Australian gymnast Georgia Godwin. How are you, Georgia? I'm good, thanks Lachlan. Thanks for having me. Uh, it's fantastic to chat to you and look, let's get, get it straight out of the way. How has quarantine be, been for you? What have you been up to? Um, it's been, it's been a bit long. Today's day 10. So the countdown is on, we're on the home stretch. Um, but every day it kind of is all looking a bit the same. So we wake up, um, I do like a FaceTime workout with Emily, um, and then have lunch, do some other like work things that I need to get through and then just relax for the rest of the day. Now you were telling me a little bit before we came on that you have been watching a bit of Netflix as well. Uh, anything in particular that's been catching your eye? What what series you've been getting through? Um, so I, so many of my friends have said Outer Banks. Um, so I smashed out two seasons in I think three <laughs> games. Um, <laughs> so any recommendations? Please hit me up. I'd love to know. <laughs> Well, remember, we're going to be live for about the next 15, 20 minutes or so. So if you've got any questions for Georgia, leave them in the comments below and we'll try to get them. We've already had a, quite a few sent in on Instagram. Make sure for our next few episodes, if you want to leave any questions for our athletes that we're chatting to, head over to our Instagram and you can do that there. I mean, let's go off at the very beginning. Uh, how did you get into gymnastics? What sort of got you into the sport? Um, well, I guess from a young age, I think I was about three, mum and dad um, bought me trampoline and I just like, it was, I was in heaven. Like every day I was jumping on it, teaching myself tricks. So mum and dad um, enrolled me in a local PCYC, just like a little gymnastics club kind of thing. And then it just went from there. Um, about a year later, I moved into a an actual gymnastics club. And then um, several years after that, I moved up to Brisbane to pursue my elite gymnastics career. And then after that, I'm here. <laughs> when you take that step to pursue that, uh, I guess, elite career, as you said, uh, what sort of goes into that? How many hours a day or how many days a week are you training to, to become a professional gymnast? Yeah, so I went from, I think it was about 12 to 15 hours a week. And as soon as I went into, um, I guess, my elite career, um, it bumped up to about 28 hours. And with that, I was still trying to juggle school, social life. Um, so I definitely had to learn time management and organization like very quickly. Um, but yeah, so just had to learn everything on the spot and yeah. We've got uh, one of our first questions I want to go to is from Alyssa, who sent one in over on Instagram, and I guess kind of ties into the pathway that you took. Any advice for a young gymnast to trying to get into a high level of gymnastics? Um, well, I guess for me going into high level, that wasn't always my goal. Um, I did gymnastics because it was fun. I loved it. The challenge was what kept me coming back. Um, and my teammates were just so supportive. So that's what kept me going and pushing to be better, to try, to try harder skills. And then um, when I got the opportunity, I, I was like, well, why not give it a go? Like I get to move to Brisbane, I get to make new friends, um, try out new coaches. Um, so I guess just, just enjoy the whole journey. And yeah, when, when an opportunity comes, go for it, grab it with both hands. Another one on a similar sort of vein is from Gabby over on Instagram who says, is 13 too late to start gymnastics? She says she's currently a dancer with some acrobatic skills, but could she still pursue it as a career? I think so. Like you're never too yeah. late to start gymnastics, like especially um, Gabby with your background in dancing and acro skills. Like I think that would definitely give you a boost. Um, never too old to start gymnastics. I think that's a, a pretty good way to sum it up. Look, as someone who isn't flexible, I know I've definitely missed the boat, but I'm sure there's a lot of people out there who would still love to get into, into the sport. I mean, we've obviously seen this resurgence of gymnastics in the last few years. And I mean, there's one American athlete who I guess you were lucky enough to compete against this year who has been responsible for that in Simone Biles. I mean, what has it been like seeing someone like her absolutely, I guess, transfix not just the gymnastics world, but the sporting world and, and really reignite people's passion for the sport. Yeah, well, um, Simone was actually in my subdivision. So I got to yeah. train and compete alongside her, which was 
incredible just to see her like actually do the skills in person was a whole nother another level to seeing it on youtube or instagram um but like what what she's done for the sport regarding like um mental health especially going back to the olympics like it's just mm. phenomenal and she's teaching the younger athletes that like every day is not going to be perfect and that you need to look after yourself first um because uh, gymnastics is can be a dangerous sport um, so you do need to speak up when something doesn't feel right. As we kind of saw at the Olympics, as you mentioned, she took a, a very brave and powerful stand to to really put her mental health first, which is a really important thing. As fellow athletes in that competition, what was it like in that moment to see someone really put themselves ahead of the sport and go, that's, that's a really proud and a, a really powerful stance to sort of take? Yeah, well, I fully backed Simone, like, I've had the mm. twisties. Um, I, luckily for me, I was back at home. I was in the gym. I had soft landing so I could kind of untwist myself. Um, yeah. But to, to be at the Olympics and get them, like it is, it would have been very scary. And for her to say, no, like this isn't safe for me and to stand up and back herself um, to do that. Like it's just, it's amazing that she, she kind of, she's leading this new pathway, I guess, for all, all athletes. That actually leads to a question from Ben Darwin, who's watching on Facebook. Can you explain the twisties for people who might not be aware of what exactly they are? Um, I'll do it. Like, I'll give it my best shot. So for me, <laughs> when I had the twisties, um, when you do like a somersault and you put in a twist, most of the time, well, every time you should know how many twists you're going to do. But for me, if I was like, okay, I'm going to do um, a full twist, sometimes my brain would think of doing a full twist, but I'd actually do a double twist or I'd do a one and a half twist and I wouldn't know where I am in the air. So sometimes I'd land on my feet, sometimes I'd land on my back, like it was all over the place. So you just, you're not too sure where you are in the air, I guess. Like mm. your brain just, there's something not quite right when you go for a skill. Now let's look at this Olympic experience. I mean, obviously it was your Olympic debut, so it would have been pretty surreal. Probably not how you would have thought and not how many Australian athletes would have thought their Olympic debut might come in terms of empty crowds and things like that. But it, it must have still been a pretty surreal moment for you to, to be out there competing on the Olympic stage. Oh, 100%. Like this, I was um, selected, I think it was about 18 months ago. So it's just been a long dream of mine. Um, even before that, like I'd always wanted to represent Australia at the Olympics um, and just being out on the floor, like you said, we didn't have a crowd, but I think all the athletes in my subdivision, they were just so happy to be on the comp floor competing at the Olympics. We were all cheering each other on. Um, it was just an, like a, an amazing vibe. Um, and yeah, when you're on the comp floor, you're not too focused on what's going on in the stands. So for me, it wasn't, it wasn't that big of a deal. I mean, something that we see, we've seen a lot in a lot of the sports at these Olympic Games, especially some of the new sports like skateboarding. Uh, the athletes are all so close and also friendly during competition, post competition. Is that something that happens in gymnastics too, that you're all such a really close bunch when you go out to compete? Yeah, definitely. So we had um, about a week of training before we actually competed. So um, my teammate, teammate and I, we were in a mixed group with Romania, Slovakia and Portugal. And we formed a, like a very close bond with each other. Um, there was a bit of a language barrier, but we did get through that. Um, and we just like cheered everyone on. Like it's really kind of what got, got us through the fact that we didn't have crowds and it was bit of a different games um yeah it was just like an incredible experience to to be in what was it like obviously 2018 com games your home com games essentially in front of a big crowd what was it like the difference competing there with a, a raucous crowd in front of your home probably friends and family to competing at the olympic games in front of no one almost um yeah like i still don't have words for com games like walking out mm. onto the floor um looking out into the crowd and seeing family and friends and competing in front of them um but being in japan like with with mum being from japan like it was nice just being there and it was a little sad because 
Um, I did like my grandpa was meant to be watching on TV and I was, I had some family coming and um, yeah, it was a little sad not having them there, but I knew they were all watching and supporting and um, yeah, like it's, I couldn't really change the crowd situation. So I just Mm. had to make do with what I had. Now let's talk about a bit about your events there. Obviously, competing in a few of the different disciplines. Do, do you have a preferred discipline, or do you kind of just enjoy being able to be that all-around athlete and being able to do the balance beam, fold unevens bars, whatever it might be? Um, I do love all of them. The beam is a little nerve-wracking, um, but I love competing on the floor. Like I love just tumbling and getting the attention of the judges and just smiling and yeah, really when we do have a crowd, really performing for the crowd. <laughs> oh, I can only imagine what that would have felt like. Uh, I mean, one other question that I want to bring up that is going to kind of look at how you got to the Olympics is from Chloe on Instagram. Leading into the Olympics, so obviously in those weeks before heading over to Tokyo, how many hours a week were you training to sort of be at your best for the Games? Um, so we have two like different training programs, I guess, and a couple months out from the Olympics, it's trying to get a lot of numbers in a lot of routines, trying to get the fitness up. So it does mean the training sessions are a little bit longer, um, Mm -hmm. anyway, between 28 to 30 hours. Um, but in the couple weeks leading up to Tokyo, um, we were actually in Canberra. So we had, um, the AIS gym, like the girls' side, all to ourselves. Um, we could get in. We had a set number program, and we just did our program and left. So I think in the end, each session was an hour and a half to two hours. Um, so it was really a get-in, get-out mentality. Um, it was more focused on quality and giving our body a rest when we needed it. Um, so, yeah, it was a bit of a switch going into Canberra, but... Outside of actually competing at the games, what are your favourite memories, f- favourite moments from being in, in the village, just being in Tokyo? Was there anything in particular you go, wow, that was pretty amazing? Um, one thing that comes to mind is the opening ceremony. So um, we didn't get to go just with some athletes don't get to go because mm. competition might be close. Um, there might be some other reasons they might not go, but the Australian Olympic team put on I guess, our own opening ceremony in the village. And like that moment really hit me hard. I was like, oh, wow, like this is real. Um, We all got dressed up. We did our own little march, sang Waltzing Matilda and read the athlete's oath. And like it really, that moment hit me. And I was very proud to be representing like this incredible country. So, yeah. Was there a favourite sort of fellow Australian athlete that you got to meet while you are in the village that you kind of got a little bit starstruck by? Um, Paddy Mills. <laughs> yeah, that's been a popular he's answer. Just, he's the nicest guy in the world and, yeah, he's, like, up for a chat and, yeah, just so genuine. I think based on some of the Instagram feeds of some of the athletes, it was almost like meeting Patty Mills was the the, the best bit about the games and then actually competing was number two because everyone just said he was so nice to chat to. 100%. He's just an incredibly kind person. Now, another question that has been put on Instagram and a lot of people have asked is, just how much free stuff do athletes actually get from the games? We saw we saw the ASIC shoe room that yeah. got a the fair workout with the, the free foot scan. We saw the little the little Coca-Cola tag for free drinks from the vending machine. I mean, mm-hmm. we saw the Samsung phone and earbuds as well. What sort of stuff yeah. are we talking there? It looked like a pretty good loop you guys came away with. Yeah, so everything you just said, um, the Samsung phone, I'm still still trying to work out. Um, I'm an Apple user, so <laughs> I don't think I'll be converting. Um, but, yeah, so when we arrived in the village, we had this, like, bedspread, so we get to take home the um, Tokyo 2020 Olympic Duna. Um, and, yeah, like, there was just a lot of pin swapping, so I've got pins from all different countries. Mm. Uh, and, yeah, that, there was just so much going on. Like, you could play this little game and get your own little um, Tokyo 2020 pin set. So <laughs> there was a lot to do. <laughs> And I think I saw there's a there's actual merchandise store for the athletes as well that you can go in and buy things if you wanted to as well, isn't there? Yeah, there is. Um, I think I don't think they were like too ready for 
everyone to come through all at once. So it was pretty empty when Emily and I went, but we went back a couple of days and they were constantly restocking. There was so much stuff um, and I may have spent a bit more than um, I intended to. So, <laughs> oops, sorry. <laughs> Now, one question that's been sent in from a little bit closer from inside the Sporting News HQ is on your Gymnastics Australia profile, uh, you've stated that you're a Brisbane Broncos fan. Obviously, we cover a fair bit of NRL here at Sporting News. I, I want to make sure I, I quote this question correctly. Uh, what are your coping mechanisms for supporting the Brisbane Broncos at the moment? Um, coping mechanisms, just knowing that they will come back stronger than ever. <laughs> season. <laughs> Look, I'm sure that is a shared yeah. feeling by, by a lot of Broncos <laughs> fans at the moment. So you're definitely not alone there. Uh, we've got a couple more fan questions that have come in through Instagram. Uh, one thing, uh, that I, I think is important to talk about, uh, that a lot of gymnasts go through is the the ripping on the hands and the things like that, that mm -hmm. Caitlin wants to know what, what is the process like when you rip them and what steps do you have to take to kind of take precautionary measures and to, to deal with it? Yeah. So I'm lucky now that I, I've, I've not ripped in a very long time, um, mm. touch wood, but when <laughs> I was younger, like every single day I'd have a new rip and my process was, um, while I was still training just to strap it up with tape and continue. Um, mm. But when I finished, it was to um, disinfect and make sure it's clean. So there's no infection. And I like to use the tea bag method. So like okay. we steep the tea bag, let it cool. And then you put that on and it seems to just dry it out a little bit. Um, but yeah, other than that, just strapping it up. So you're not causing more damage afterwards. And another question we got was sort of following on from your Olympic experience, I guess, what's next? Are you going to be, Sue wants to know if you're going to be looking towards the world championships later this year? Um, I would love to go to world champs, but I'm not too sure um, just with the COVID situation mm. and we would have to come back and do another two weeks in quarantine. Um, and with it being so close to Com Games, which is only next year, yeah. um, I think Com Games is my next benchmark event that I will be training for. Um, so, yeah, that'll be exciting. Not long to go now in Birmingham. <laughs> yeah. So have you started planning out, I guess, your your next year in terms of preparing for the Commonwealth Games? What does that look like? And is it going to be primarily based in Australia, I guess, as a result of all these COVID lockdowns at the moment? Um, I think so. I haven't had yeah. a chance to quite, like, go through the program with my coaches yet, but with the COVID situation and the 14 day quarantine, I don't think we'll be doing um, a lot of traveling. Um, I know we'll have like state championships and nationals and mm. um, the like Australian competitions leading up to it. Um, but yeah, we, you know, you don't know, might, might change the COVID situation next year. Um, but yeah, not too sure yet. And I guess beyond that, are you are you already kind of penciled in your diary? Are you looking towards Paris 2024 and getting that second taste of the Olympic experience? I would love to go to another Olympics um, and to experience it with a team would be like just the career highlight. Um, so we'll, we'll see. Like I just have to reassess where the body's at, where the mind's at. Um, but, yeah, 2024 would be an amazing opportunity if I can go for that. Well, Georgia, we hope to see you there. Obviously, it's going to be an exciting next year as you prepare for the Commonwealth Games. Um, thank you so much again for joining us today. Uh, before we go, if people want to follow you, follow your journey, where can they find you on social media? Um, so I'm on Instagram, Georgia underscore Godwin, um, and I am on Facebook as well. And, yeah, if you have any questions, send them through. I'm always happy to answer them. Um, and thanks, thanks for all your amazing questions and thanks for having me. Thanks so much, Georgia. Stay tuned. We've got another episode tomorrow afternoon, which we'll be announcing later tonight. So yeah, thank you everyone for joining us and we'll catch you next time. Thank you.